They were the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. For them, Jannah was real. For them, Allah was real. They felt Jannah. They had reached a stage that this was real to them. When the Prophet wasallam was about to migrate, this was the final negotiation with the people of Ansar. 73 of the Ansar came to finalize the negotiations. And the Prophet wasallam came with his uncle Abbas, who wasn't a Muslim at the time. And his uncle Abbas started the negotiations. And he said that this is my nephew, Muhammad. He is in Mecca with us, with the Bani Hashim. And we will look after him as long as he is with us. Now tell me, will you the people of Medina look after him in the same manner? And the Ansar turned to the Prophet wasallam, And they said, O Messenger of Allah, you tell us, what do you desire from us? And the Prophet wasallam said, I expect from you, that you will defend me like you defend your women and children, that you will spend upon me in times of ease and in times of difficulty, that you will obey me, you like it or you dislike it, that you will enjoin good and you will forbid evil. And then in the matters of religion, you will not be concerned about what people say. If the entirety of humanity stands against you, you will stand up for what you believe in. And the Ansar said, O Messenger of Allah, if we fulfill the conditions, then what will we get in return? And the Prophet ﷺ said one word. He said, you will get Jannah. And Kaab ibn Malik who was sitting there who narrates this, he says, Rabbi al he says, what a bargain. What a bargain. What was the Prophet ﷺ asking them to do? He was asking them to give their lives, give their wealth. Listen to him if they like it or dislike it. If the entirety of humanity goes against it, they will remain firm. And in return, what was he promising them? Something they couldn't feel, something they couldn't touch. Something they couldn't see. But because to them Allah was real. Jannah was real. They believed it. Because they had a connection with Allah. And what did they say? Rabbi al What a bargain. What a bargain. And if you look, this was the life what the Sahaba were like. And maybe you can understand this from an example. You know, there was a man who was climbing a mountain. And whilst he's climbing the mountain, he believed that by the end of the evening, he would reach the top. But night fell and he hadn't reached the top. And it's pitch dark. He can't see a thing. But he believes he's close to the top. So he carries on climbing. And he's feeling his way. And all of a sudden, what happens? His foot slips. And he's falling. And he's falling. And then his rope gets tangled into a branch and he's dangling in middle air. He can't see a thing. And in this state of desperation, he says, Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, help me. And he hears a voice. Do you really believe that I can help you? And the man says, Yes, Oh Allah, only you can help me. Nobody besides you can help me. And then the voice says, if you really believe that I am the only one who can help you, then cut the rope. Cut the rope. If, the, if your iman is like is so strong and your trust is so strong, then cut the rope. The next morning, the rescue team came. They found a man dangling six feet off the ground, frozen to death because he did not really trust and this was the difference between the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and us. Whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they believed.
تذكر يوما كنت تعانق دمعة الفكر تناجي الله في صبر وترجو رحمة تسري فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت